United States of America. It stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Councilman Galtieri, would you uh, please lead us in the invocation? As we gather here today as members of the Township Council, we pray that we are ever mindful of opportunities to render our service to fellow citizens and to our community, keeping in mind always the enduring values of life, exerting our efforts in those areas and on those things upon which future generations can build with confidence. Let us continue to strive to make a better world. Amen. 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 Thank you. Madam Master Clerk, please call the roll. Councilman and Barson? Yes. Here. Councilman Chase? Yes, here. Councilwoman Francois? Councilman Galtieri? Here. Mayor Kramer? Here. Deputy Mayor Onijaka? Councilwoman Pruitt? Here. Councilman Vassanella? Here. Councilman Wright? Here. Thank you. We're on to item number five, commendations and proclamations. Actually, before that, um, hold on just one second. Um, Mr. McQueen, there's a, there's a difference now that people are going to be able for public comments to come on um, with, uh, with a with video. Um, so people may want to get that ready. Uh, if they're going to do public speaking, Mr. McQueen, uh, would you explain that now so they have some time to prepare? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Anybody wishing to speak on video? Hold on. Sorry about that. Anybody wishing to speak on video? When we call upon you, we're going to ask that you raise your hand when you wish to speak. We'll then call and ask if you want to be on video. If so, I will present. I will make you a presenter, and you can start your video. And then when you're done, we'll put you back to an attendee. Okay. Thank you. We have on to item number five, commendations and proclamations. A very prideful uh, time. We're going to swear in three captains. Let me hand it over to our uh, police uh, public safety director, um, Director School. Good evening, everyone. So today is a great event. We have the swearing in of Captain Brian Regan, Ca Captain Philip Rizzo, and, and Captain Sean Hebben. And the three of them have earned the rank of captain for the Franklin Township Police Department. And I, uh, it's an honor for me to be here and see this event. Um, captain Hebben is our first African-American captain in the history of the Franklin Township Police Department. Um, I did a press release early this week, and I am honored to have these three men as a part of my command staff. Um, I expect great things from them, and I'm excited to begin this new era in the Franklin Township Police Department. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Um, I guess, Madam Clerk, it's up to okay. you. All right. We'll start with Captain Regan. Uh, repeat after me. I, Brian Regan. I, Brian Regan. To solemnly swear. To solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. And the Constitution. And the Constitution. Of the state of New Jersey. Of the state of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance. And I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the same. To the same. And to the governments established and to the governments established in the United States, in the United States, and in this state, and in this state, under the authority of the people, under the authority of the people. And I will faithfully, and I will faithfully, impartially, impartially, and justly perform, justly perform all the duties of, all the duties of, Captain of the Franklin Township Police Department, Captain of the Franklin Township Police Department, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. That's terrific. Um, why don't we swear everyone in and then we'll ask people to speak. 
Okay, Captain Rizzo. Yeah. Okay. All right, repeat after me. I, Philip Rizzo. I, Philip Rizzo. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. And the Constitution. And the Constitution. Of the state of New Jersey. Of the state of New Jersey. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the same. To the same. And to the government established. And to the governments established. In the United States. In the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully. Impartially. Impartially. Justly perform. And justly perform. All the duties of. All the duties of. Captain of the Franklin Township Police Department. Captain of the Franklin Township Police Department. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my abilities. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. One more. One more. Okay. And okay. Raise your right hand. Okay. I Sean Heaven. I Sean Heaven. Do you solemnly swear? Solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. And the Constitution. And the Constitution. Of the state of New Jersey. Of the state of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance. I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the same. To the same. And to the governments established. To the governments established. In the United States. In the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. And that I will faithfully. And I will faithfully. Impartially. And partially. And justly perform. Justly perform. All the duties of. All the duties of. Captain of the Franklin Township Police Department. Captain of the Franklin Township Police Department. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. That's correct. Cap Captain Regan. Two words. Yep. No, I'm not. Uh, I just want to say thank you to, uh, to you, Mr. Mayor, council members, manager, and of course, Director Spruill. Um, it has been, uh, it has always been, and it is you know, still now a privilege and an honor to serve Franklin. Um, I've been working with Phil and Sean for a long time, both in the Detective Bureau um, department-wide, and I am just as sure of their capabilities as I am of anyone else's in the department. Um, I think going forward, under the direction of Director Spruill, um, when her leadership, that we are going to be able to maintain the most uh, highest and ethical and professional standards that um, is expected of us, especially now. Uh, you know, with what we're facing nationwide. It's the most important thing when we uphold the, uh, the standards and uh, abide by the guiding doctrines that we have, our policies and procedures. And I think it's going to be, uh, it's going to be, an e it's not an easy task, but it's going to be something that we can achieve together, um, especially under Director Spruill's leadership. Thank you. Thank you. Captain Rizzo. I, I really have to mirror what Captain Regan said. We've, we've all been together for 20 plus years, and uh, I, I have to say thank you to the mayor and council, uh, Director Spruill, who has provided us with tremendous uh, leadership and guidance during this time. And um, it is an honor and a privilege to serve the people of Franklin Township. Uh, I've been doing so now for 23 years, and I, I look forward to doing it. Uh, for the foreseeable future, and and I think that we have the ability uh, with the men and women of the department to do some great things and continue doing great things, and, and I just look forward to the future and what we can bring. Thank you so much.
Thank you. And Captain Hebon. I want to thank everyone for one for, for joining in on this uh on this moment. This is truly historical for Franklin, for me. Um, but even bigger than that, I've spent decades really just working hard to just work and bridge the community and the police relationship. And to have this opportunity now to do it in this capacity is just an honor. Um, I thank Director Spruill for putting this level of faith in me to be able to uh, take this position and run with it. I thank um, just the, the officers in Franklin for being uh, who they are and being professional and to um, and just the outpouring of support that I got from my fellow officers has been phenomenal. Um, it's my vow to not let you guys down through this process, to be an example and take Franklin to yet another level, to grow more and um, to see what this thing could do. Uh, we have the Community Relations Bureau that's going to be still here, still moving forward, still doing even bigger things. And um, I'm going to be here and to be very much a part of that. So I thank the township, the township council, again, Director Spruill for putting this, uh, this level of faith in me. And uh, we have big things to come. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. So I just want to make one little comment or correction. Uh, they all thank the council uh, and the mayor. But in actuality, all we did was set up the command structure. The promotion board is the um, public safety director, the manager, and the um, Raven Williams, the uh, HR uh, person. So um, great job, everyone. Uh, any council member want to make a comment, or we can save it till your council comments. Okay. Uh, thanks, guys. Uh, you get to. Uh, Relax now, we got a council meeting to them. That's terrific. Congratulations. 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 Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, we're moving on to the public discussion. Do we have a motion to open to the public? So moved. A quick and simple. I'm sorry, did I hear a second? Seconded. Moved and seconded. Uh, all in favor of opening for public discussion, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. We are open to public discussion. And I'll just bring up. Um, Mr. McQueen. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, anybody from the public wishing to speak, we ask that you use the chat function and use the raised hand option. If you're on the phone, you can hit star three. That will in, raise your hand and we can see if you need to speak. If you would like to be on video, we will ask you when I unmute you. And if you say yes, I will promote you up as a presenter so you can be on video. So at this time, anybody wishing from anyone from the public wishing to speak, please use the chat function and use raise hand option or press star three on your phone. I do not see anybody indicating they wish to speak at this time. Mr. Mayor, I am now going to unmute everybody for one final attempt to see if anybody would like to speak. Is there anybody in the public that would like to speak at this time? I do not see anybody indicating they wish to speak, Mr. Mayor. No one, no one coming forward to speak from the public on motion, and we close the public portion of the meeting. Second it. Moved and seconded. All in favor to close the public portion, say aye. Aye. And then anyone opposed, say nay. You guys, have the public uh, session is closed. We're now on to council uh, reports. I will start with Councilman Chase. Oh, I can have some notes to report on the public works meeting on September 24th. I don't think I've reported on this before. First of all, we discussed uh, 
Do we have enough money left over in the repaving budget to add a street or two? And we actually not then, but later, as much as $245,000, which will be used to repave Burger Street from Vanderbilt, that's behind the, uh, the middle school, to Marigold, just off JFK, a, a previous contractor repaving on the other side continued as far as Marigold on the east side of JFK. So we'll be doing that. We have, I think, one more group of, uh, we're trying to get some roads finished now, and then there will be some further roads paved in the spring out of this year's budget. I think we're finishing up the what we call the Academy Road area, although it includes some roads that are not that close to Academy. And then there'll be, oh, for instance, some down in the first ward to be done in the spring. Uh, an ordinance we talked about, it's not written as an ordinance yet, uh, concern, it's, it's really an amendment to an ordinance which concerns pruning trees which extend uh, branches over sidewalks and over the street. Uh, present ordinance, I think, says that they should be trimmed to um, so that nothing is below six feet, but vehicles, particularly vans, have gotten taller these days, so we propose to amend it to be uh, is it 10 feet or 14 feet above uh, the sidewalk uh, and the street, particularly the street. Uh, as we've reported previously, um, we are, we've been developing plans for a small park on uh, Willow Avenue uh, just off New Brunswick Road um, across from the big uh, <coughs> Grailbrook development there with play equipment and also benches, say, for grandparents to sit while their grandchildren use the play equipment. That's, this is Township Green Acres, so we have to uh, go through certain procedures to change the use in this way, including having a public hearing. And we think that in this one area, uh, the DEP really still requires an in-person public hearing. So what we're trying to set up will be a public hearing in the senior center where people can be sit on chairs, carefully placed six feet or more apart, and still be able to accommodate a reasonable number of people. We're, we will describe the plans at that time. And one point I'd make is these people think, oh, they're cutting down a lot of trees. We've carefully located this in an area where a lot of trees blew down during Hurricane Sandy. So keep watch. Uh, Tara Kenyon, our open space coordinator, is studying the requirements for that hearing. One thing that will have to be done is to put up a large sign at, at that corner announcing the hearing. Uh, the Phillips Road Ravine, uh, the work is ready to go at the time of the, the meeting. There were still a few permit issues to be uh, resolved, but we're intending to get that work done this year. Perhaps the manager can tell us if the permit issues have been resolved. And finally, uh, Catalpa Park, which seems like it'll never start being developed. Uh, the la latest thing that the DEP requested was an archaeology study to see if perhaps there were any Indian arrowheads or anything of the nature in the area. We had a survey done which has been submitted to the DEP. We fear that the DEP is, while working at home, is working exceedingly slowly 
So we still haven't gotten the go ahead on the necessary permit from the DEP. So that's the, uh, <clears throat> the final thing that uh, needs to be done. Uh, in my own area, there's been a lot of study both by the township and particularly by the county of ways to uh, slow traffic on Laurel Avenue. Some of the residents there have been very vocal on the subject of uh, traffic on Laurel Avenue, which is a county road. Uh, we have a 25 mile an hour speed limit. But we can't have police there all the time enforcing it. We have been enforcing it some of late. Um, and most notably, uh, probably by tomorrow, we will be putting up a flashing pedestrian uh, sign uh, to facilitate pedestrians crossing Laurel Avenue at Union, uh, Union Street, particularly, say, children going to the Yinghua School there in the Kingston School building. Um, so, and we'll see what further um, ways of slowing the traffic uh, the county approves. The, the erecting this sign was delayed because the county decided that it needed to relocate crosswalks at that intersection and carve down the, the curb so that if there were anyone in a wheelchair, they could go down into the crosswalk. But I think we're making progress there. Uh, <clears throat> so I think that's everything I have to report. I think we've probably finished the repaving of Jake's Lane. That's something that we weren't able to do last year, but it has been being done in several in recent weeks. So I hope that's about and that was a rather thorough uh, reconstruction job. So that should be done by now. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chase. So I'm gonna do something a little unusual here. Um, I received uh, an indication that someone was trying during public session to um, speak and they were not able to get through. So I'd like a motion to reopen public session try again. I don't want to um, keep someone from uh, their due just because of a technical difficulty. So do we have a motion to reopen public session? So moved. Second. Please then check your own favor of reopening public session. Say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. We are open again. Uh, Mr. McQueen, you could uh, try again, although I don't see the person who is concerned as an attorney, but perhaps you can try. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I have now unmuted everybody on the all the attendees. If anybody would like to speak, please say so now. And Mr. Mayor, I do not see the person that indicated they wanted to speak on the list at this point. Right, and I've sent them a text several times saying I was going to be it, and uh, they are, I guess, unable to. Okay, do we have a motion to close again? So moved. Second. We then second and all in favor of closing say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion is carried. Uh, public session is again closed. And Councilman Wright, you're up. And if you see me moving and bobbing, I'm sitting in the car. I have a beautiful background. And uh, here we go. This past week, um, I had the pleasure. Of a, of a webinar that, that um, it was entitled Complete Streets Technical Assistance Team for Franklin Township Crime and Prevention Through Environmental Design. Um, a little bit about the program. What they wanted to do was find out from us and then give us information on how can we make the park safer? The areas that are around the park, um, what do residents perceive that are there and are actually there that we could go out and change, mitigate the, the way things are done? Now, 
we all know that um, most of the crime is done by residents here, but there's also a window for um, other communities to come in and again, start the problems. Um, I just want to say that the group from Franklin Township, in addition to the community members there, uh, we had officials like uh, Bob Voinlocker, our township manager, really our township planner, Alan Sipowitz, who's in charge of uh, parks and recreation, uh, Ted Chase, uh, first ward councilman, and uh, Councilwoman Pruitt, who was there also. Um, and again, the purpose of the review of Williams Park, it was twofold. One crime, one crime and the overall condition of the park. Now, the crime section dealt with activities from liquor drinking to gang violence to the shootings that happened in and around the area. Uh, the report highlighted some residents um, that did not use the park and from the fear of using the park due to activities that would put them in harm's way. As I stated earlier, Williams Park has the disadvantage and advantage of being right off of Route 27, where it's easily accessible to non-residents in the area. So uh, when we look at the violence, most of it's homegrown, but again, it could come from anywhere along Route 27 corridor. Now, the participants brought up through the conversation about areas that crime could be, would be, how can I say this? Uh, where the crime would be able to be done because of the way the park is designed whether it be the, the, the bushes, whether it be the lighting that's in the park. Uh, we have a wetlands area that is dense. And that area, part of the park, you could have violence because there's no light there. Uh, if a ball was to go up, up in there and you the ball, you never know what you're running to because, again, you can't see into that the park. Um, part of the other thing, part of uh, part two, I should say, consisted of uh, the park better from uh, weight mass mitigation, uh, improvement in the placement of uh, recyclable containers, garbage cans, uh, park benches, um, extra porta potties. And, and the things of that nature through uh, trash, everything there, we looked at it and said, well, how could we make the park better? Because we have uh, residents that live around the park and including the senior center uh, residents that abuts the park. So that's one of the areas that we also looked at for fixing that area and enhancing that area for the residents. Now, that was just a, a quick overview of what you're going to see. If you come to our website, there's a link for the um, report. But if you go up there now, you can add your comments, recommendations, what have you, to the final report that will be brought out sometime later on, which we hope that between Robert Vornlocker and myself bring the authors to the township so that the council and the residents will see exactly um, what it entails, basically. Um, that part would, I think, have the residents to better understand Neiman Wales Park and its unique conditions on the border of Franklin Township. There are other parks that are inland from Castleton to Labette Park that are different in nature because they're community parks that are tucked away in Franklin Township. 
being that this is on the corner, it definitely uh, needs to be looked at. And one little part, as I mentioned earlier, the wetlands, and uh, Mr. Von Locker and I have talked about this on several occasions, is that there's a wetlands part that uh, goes over the walking track, running track. And that in and of itself would go over to the tight lot and cover the, the track itself. Now, I myself have ruined two rims going through that area that I'm still trying to collect money from, from Mr. Bornlocker. Uh, Mr. Bornlocker, is he still there? Well, I'm here, listening intently. Uh, I want to see how far we've gotten with uh, <clears throat> collective money for those rims. Um, now, the I, haven't other... seen your, I haven't seen your tort claim yet, Councilman. <laughs> <laughs> well, definitely it's in the mail. Um, now, the track of itself, we've looked at it and want to include that in the capital budget for next year. And that would help fix um, that little part of the wetlands area. But again, um, make, go to the website, make your comments. When the final report comes out, we'll bring everyone back and at a council meeting have that presentation. But remember, as I said it before, go to that website, see what's being presented so far, make those comments. If you don't make the comments, they're not going to be included. And then you'll have nothing to say when the presentation is given because you did do what you were supposed to do, which was add comments. Uh, now, I want to tax uh, First Ward Councilman Chase, if I can, to discuss the combination of the M1, N2 uh, zoning that went from the land use to the planning board uh, for final say. And I think it's on the agenda for this uh, this evening for first introduction. Am I correct on that, Mr. Mayor? Yes, you are. And why don't we discuss that when we get to that? Absolutely. Uh, so I would just like Councilman Chase, when you do get to that, to further explain exactly what we wanted to do. And that's my report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, uh, Councilwoman Crystal Poole. Thank you so much, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to report out some uh, information from public safety. Um, we will be hiring eight officers this fall. Um, mm -hmm. We will still have about seven vacancies coming forward, but um, Oh, excuse me, wrong notes. Um, we are hiring eight officers this fall, apologies. Um, and on this Thursday, I believe, um, I don't know if you've seen it driving around or out and about, but the pink police car is back um, for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, they will be doing an event at the Somerville Courthouse at the county seat, Somerville, at 11 a.m., uh, on Thursday, and then they will be heading to Moore, Moreland Farms um, for an additional presentation. Um, the Community Relations Bureau is really gearing up and will be doing a lot of programming, including their cadet program, uh, pumpkin decorations for this Halloween, uh, the Crossroads program. Uh, the township manager has all the details, so I'll leave it to him to discuss further. Um, and just a PSA, please remember to lock your doors, um, be it car or house or apartment, please lock them. Um, better to be safe than sorry. Um, and I wanted to congratulate our new captains. Um, as we seek to really communicate and connect with our communities, um, I'm really excited to see what these captains will bring to the table. Um, looking at policing now and having conversations about policing, especially in marginalized communities or the black and brown communities, um, I think this is a really good 
step in the right direction because when we look at policing, we have to look at the culture and culture isn't just, you know, the individuals on the street. Culture also comes from the top. So I'm really, really excited about the quality of captains that we were just lucky enough to have sworn in and I'm expecting great things from all of them and I'll have my eye on them. So congratulations again, it's a big accomplishment. So very proud of the work you have done and the work that you will do for the township um, and looking forward to great things. Um, and that's all I have. Thank you, Councilwoman Pruitt. Uh, before I go on, I neglected to introduce uh, Carol Orlin, who is um, a smarter version of Lou Renone uh, sitting in for us since we couldn't make it. Uh, she is our township attorney for the night. Uh, moving on to Councilman James Vassanello. Thank you. Um, I want to remind anybody who has not voted, uh, vote, and I believe the vote, voting ballot box is in front of our front doors of our municipal building in the Horseshoe Driveway. I believe it's uh, protected by a surveillance camera and fairly lit up and available 24 hours a day for anybody who would like to drop their mail ballot in there. Um, I'd like to congratulate the three officers, three very fine officers who were promoted to captain. I don't know, Bob Warlocker may know, I, I think this may be the first time we ever had three captains. No, actually, we've had three captains uh, yeah. in the past, yes. Okay, must have been a very long time ago. Well, I'm glad we have three more now, and as many people may know or may not know, when we changed the structure of our police administration last year and had a public safety director as opposed to a chief and a deputy chief, the role of captain comes in even much more important role. And I am um, happy and proud to see these three people promoted to that rank and to help guide our police force going forward. I've worked with all of them in various capacities ELS committee to emergency management committee to the Hamilton board, um, Hamilton Street board and issues of, uh, special investment district in Hamilton Street in a variety of other ways over the years. And, and I'm not surprised that all three of them have um, been put in that position, which again is an extremely important position with our new command structure. Um, I just wanna reference something Councilman Chase mentioned about the streets we're doing. Um, so we have money designated for many streets. He mentioned some of them. And we will be doing a handful in the um, Eastern Farms area. I'm not sure the exact ones. I believe Culver, Johnny Bush, and perhaps Hollywood, but a few major streets there, which are um, in desperate need. And we'll be done in the spring because um, there's only so much work we could do before the weather it's um, not practical to do road repaving. In the meanwhile, if anybody has any issues, especially potholes or deteriorating parts of their street, we have a portal still on our website and you can gladly um, tell one of your council people, but um, there's a, a way you can just go onto the homepage of our, our township website and, and report a, a pothole. And we are pretty quick with getting to um, out there and do it. Um, and um, please, because, um, you know, streets before they get bad enough to need complete repaving often have issues. I see the manager has put that up on the screen for us. I think. Anyway, um, but that is there and with the weather changing and, and the winter coming, um, and I'm sure it'll be roads that need some. There it is. Thank you so much. Because um, again, we can't pave roads just when there's a small repair, but we will get out there and do everything we can. And we do have a lot of very, very good, sophisticated equipment uh, to do a variety of road repairs prior to a road need complete repaving. Um, again, congratulations to the 
to the officers that were made captain tonight. Um, and that's it, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilman Vastinella. Um, we are at little for the shuffle of the other, uh, but I guess you're on to Councilman uh, Ambassar. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a number of updates uh, today, uh, starting with the uh, sewerage authority board meeting last week on the 6th. Um, as you uh, know, the uh, board has reaffirmed no rate increase uh, for this year, upcoming coming year. Um, and also we are going to uh, extend the courtesy of late payments uh, without any penalty on a month to month uh, basis going forward. Um, also, we have uh, an issue with the Somerset uh, uh, sort of pump station. Uh, we experience um, very high volume of inflows from time to time, and we are trying to determine uh, the reason for that. Um, and uh, through use of a smoke test, uh, basically, um, we'll identify any unauthorized uh, connections uh, to our uh, solar line. Um, uh, it's uh, going to be done in the next uh, two weeks or so after we uh, print out uh, notices and door hangers to uh, kind of give a heads up to the uh, residents that uh, if they see a uh, weird color smoke coming out of uh, um, their property line somewhere, we are uh, doing the test. Uh, our staff will be there uh, every, every street uh, as we do the test, and hopefully we can identify uh, some issues and correct them um, so that we don't have to pay uh, unnecessary uh, sort of processing fees to the ones with, uh, on the sewer side. Um, we have an upcoming um, Human Relations Commission meeting on the 28th. Uh, it's Cheryl Bethia, uh, the chairman of the uh, build up. Um, uh, it's going to be uh, speaking. Uh, I think that, that, that organization provides um, a lot of resources to uh, youth uh, who are new to adulting. So um, that is coming up on the 28th. The uh, commission, some of the commissioners uh, and myself and uh, um, the new Captain Sean Evan, we have been working on a, um, an initiative. Um, we have a, a kind donation by a IT uh, association that is uh, uh, donating $5,000 uh, to the uh, uh, township, um, specifically up, uh, to the Community Relations Bureau, where um, Sean uh, Evan, uh, Captain Evan, is uh, going to be leading an effort to assist uh, school children, uh, especially in the um, uh, physical activities, the tuition and counseling. Uh, so those five thousand uh, dollars will be used to uh, buy some computers, uh, pay for computers, um, and uh, some desks, uh, supplies, and so forth. Uh, so that's a new. Uh, uh, Initiative, uh, thanks to Commissioner Avenki Saragopan, uh, who uh, brought uh, the uh, association to the table, and the $5,000 donation will be made uh, to the township. Um, so, uh, I have a huge shout out to our rising star fellow council member, Crystal Ford, uh, who made the Insider New Jersey Top 100 Millennials in Politics. I believe that's the second year in a row, Councilor. So congratulations uh, to uh, uh, Scott. Uh, keep it uh, going. Um, you have a bright future. Um, and uh, lastly, um, we, uh, this is a historic day in Franklin Township. Uh, we, as, uh, we, we saw the promotion of three captains, obviously, but one of them uh, is a uh, African American. I believe that's the first time I uh, manager. All right. Let's have to unmute. Yes, this is the first African American captain in the police department's history. Yeah, so that's a great uh, day for the uh, Franklin Township and the police department and for the entire community, which are, sh should all be very proud of the fact that uh, Sean um, has uh, uh, reached uh, uh, the great heights of uh, being promoted uh, to be a captain. So um, the
township, uh, as you know, uh, we are we are a very diverse uh, township, and they do it. But like um, during the swearing in, I had kind of uh, uh, laid out uh, one of my goals is to uh, improve uh, the minority recruitment uh, into our uh, public safety department. Uh, so to that effect, um, uh, if you look at our population, you know we have uh, really. 62% uh, uh, of our population is minorities, including African Americans, South Asians, and Hispanics. Uh, but the representation in the uh, police department uh, is not at the same level. So we like to improve the recruitment. Uh, to that effort, uh, to that effect, I'm um, announcing that uh, uh, I would create uh, a funding stream to help the recruitment uh, in terms of. Uh, uh, providing some expenses uh, to minority recruitment uh, of the police officers or scholarships uh, to promote um, getting them to uh, police academy uh, and uh, with a promise to uh, join our PD. Uh, so whatever that might be, so I'm announcing a fund that uh, personally I'm going to open up uh, through a foundation. Um, we would uh, use those funds Toward improving and increasing diversity in our uh, police department. Um, so uh, I'm happy to contribute uh, to the uh, development of this initiative in the coming years. And I'll make you a That's all I have for you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Councilman Galtier. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Hopefully, my computer stays on right now. Uh, uh, just again, congratulations to our newly promoted captains. Uh, Well-deserved promotions and um, their successful careers uh, that you've had. So uh, uh, an impressive step in progression. Um, I, I see. I happen to see on social media a lot of people posting uh, ring or security camera footage um, about incidents that happen around the town. So just a selfless plug for the Stronger Together camera, voluntary camera registration. Um, again, this is just a program that was started that would help the police in case there's an incident. So if something happens at one of your neighbor's house, they uh, they know you have cam uh, a camera available to potentially look at. But again, uh, they do not have the police do not have access to the footage. You have to provide that. It's just a uh, helpful starting point. Um, and that can be found on the Franklin Township website under Departments Police. And there's a section all about Stronger Together with a uh, registration form about uh, two thirds of the way down the page. Uh, as far as board meetings, the only thing that I had uh, um, that hasn't been reported is fire prevention. Uh, last week was National Fire Prevention Week with a focus on kitchen safety. Um, so uh, unfortunately, it's going to be next month. But again, just a reminder, next month is um, from our own Malaya Williams. I don't know if you can see this very well in the camera, but this was her artwork uh, that she submitted and won the competition or was added into the calendar. And it's actually a picture of a stove for the fire reminding everybody to look, listen, learn, be aware, fire can happen anywhere. So um, again, congratulations to her. And uh, remind, a reminder to check your smoke and CO detectors. Um, and finally, just continue to, please continue to stay safe. Um, practice uh, precautions to, to, to uh, avoid the virus that's still ongoing in this pandemic and um but also if you're able to um financially to try to help support our local businesses it's going to become tougher for them as uh as outdoor dining becomes a little more difficult so um if you're able to try to help them out because it does help members of our community um and also if you're able to donate to our local food food bank and food pantries um there are people still struggling so please keep them in mind uh, especially as we get into the colder months. Um, and with that, Mr. Mayor, that's all I have. Thank you, Councilman. Councilwoman Kimberly Francois. If you're speaking, we can't hear you, Councilwoman. You are on the Uh, 
okay. I'm not sure what's happening there. there. Uh, I will go back. I will um, try again in a minute. Uh, Deputy Mayor Charles Onijaka. Yes. Oh, thank you, Mayor. Um, first of all, I would like to congratulate uh, all our captains. And uh, also, this time around, we know that uh, we really, really need them. I congratulate them. Another thing is, uh, on behalf of our community and um, the Macaulay's, I wish to express our profound gratitude to the mayor, the council, and the entire Franklin Township, most especially of Van Locker, for your support during this trying time. Our care and support to the family, as the family that lost the vibrant young man, shows the kind of diversity, caring in Franklin Township. Everything went fine. Mayor, this is all I have at this particular time. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Councilwoman Kimberly Francois. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, I'm so sorry. I work in IT and I'm having problems with computers. I can't figure this out to save my life. Last weekend I had a problem. This weekend I had to download on my phone. This is so strange. I'm on WebEx all day, every day. I'm on Zoom. I'm on Ring Central. I'm on uh, GoToMeeting. I don't know what's going on with this whole link with uh, Franklin Township. So I missed the um, swearing in, but congratulations to our three new captains, and I apologize. I started working on my computer. It's embarrassing. About uh, 6.45, I thought I would get in. But hopefully I'll work with Bob from IT, and we'll get this together next week. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have no other comments. Because I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> okay. That's all right. I'm a doctor. I get sick. I have to call my mother to ask what I do. Um, okay. So um, now for my comments. Uh, there was a financial oversight meeting. Uh, we discussed the uh, CDBG grants to sum it up um, between the old grant money and the new grant money. We have a half a million dollars which we're putting out in uh, small loans. Uh, these can be, uh, these are zero percent interest loans that can be forgivable. Um, uh, they're going to, um, they have to be to people in the census tracts um, in the uh, north uh, east corner of the town, uh, census tracts 532. 533, um, and you're going to be hearing more about that um, in uh, a little while. But that's some money that the town can use to help people out. Um, township revenue is at, is up, actually, from last year by $177,000. Um, it's up because we got some money from FEMA having nothing to do with COVID. From an old storm, we got three hundred and seventy-nine thousand dollars, so that that brought us up. Well, what is down is the hotel tax is down forty-one percent, which is three hundred and forty-five thousand dollars. No surprise there. Um, a bit of a decrease in construction of eight point six percent, which is a hundred and thirty-four thousand um, dollars. The actually the um, of course, our biggest source of revenue is property taxes, and that's actually slightly up from last year. So right now, the town is in good shape. Uh, I hope it continues. This pandemic isn't over, so we need to watch our pennies. Um, but so far, the town is in good shape. Um, um, the other thing we discussed was body cameras for the police. Uh, it seems that all of council is uh, excited about that or eager to have that. Maybe not excited is the right word. But um, the cost of it's going to be in the ballpark of, of 
um, $300,000 once for cameras and the service uh, to do it. Um, and, uh, I believe personally that's money uh, well spent. Um, okay, moving on here. Um, I, I do want to congratulate the, the captains. Uh, a lot of hard work on their part, a lot of hard work to come, and I've got a lot of faith in them. Um, everybody, please get out and vote. Uh, it's always important to vote. Our country is uh, in a bit of turmoil now. Uh, it's important that your voice is heard. Um, today is the last day to register. Uh, I think you can still register online until midnight. I'm actually not sure of that, whether that ended at five. But today's the last day to register. Um, if you, um, you haven't gotten a ballot by now, you should have. So there's a problem there. You need to call the county clerk uh, or email the county clerk in order to make sure you get your ballot. Um, but you should have gotten it by mail. Uh, it is preferred that you mail in your ballot or drop it in the drop box, as Councilman Massanella indicated. Um, you can drop it off at a polling uh, location on the day of election. Uh, if all else fails, you can vote uh, by um, provisional ballot. Only people who have a handicap that prevents them from using a mail-in ballot will be allowed to use the voting machines. Um, Please try to go to the polling location you're assigned. There are only seven of them in town this year. It makes it easier uh, if you go to the one you're assigned. It'll help with social distancing. It'll help because there's only so many provisional ballots out there and they're evenly distributed accordingly. Um, but if you're in a pinch, any of the township polling locations will take uh, your ballot or take a mail-in ballot. Um, there are safeguards against people trying to vote more than once. Uh, if you do, you will be getting a call from the prosecutor. The seven locations are the Greekstown Firehouse, correct me if I make a mistake here, Madam uh, Clerk, uh, Consolata Missions, now called the BOE Center, but Consolata Mission, um, the Senior Center in the Municipal Complex, uh, 100 JFK, uh, which is a Presbyterian church. Uh, Parkside, Zara Path, and East Franklin Firehouse. Um, please continue to be safe out there. Uh, our numbers did go up a bit. Uh, today was another zero zero day. Um, that's great. We haven't had one in a long time. So, uh, zero infections, zero fatalities. That's good. Parts of New Jersey are moving up. Um, Ocean City County, um, or Ocean County, I'm sorry, is uh, going up. So um, New Jersey is not out of the woods yet. Please, please be careful. Um, we are having a test, another uh, test open to anyone. Um, uh, whether you're a resident, not a resident, insurance, not insurance. Um, no questions asked. You have to be, if you're under 18, you have to be accompanied by an adult uh, with you. But that's going to be at the Hamilton Street Middle School. Um, and that is all I have. I do notice on the attendee list that we do have a dignitary there. I've always uh, made it a habit that we have a dignitary in the audience. When they come in, even if they come in late, I give them the opportunity to speak. Um, Mr. McQueen, uh, if Mr. Danielson, uh, Assemblyman Danielson wishes to speak, um, can we open it up to him? Can we unmute him? Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. It's always nice to see all of you. Mr. Vornlocker, good to see you, sir. Uh, I just want to congratulate not only the captains and the police director, but I want to congratulate the council members. Tonight's event is uh, remarkable. Uh, promoting not only three captains, in my personal opinion, 
that was just a perfect choice of three individuals uh, to select for such leadership roles. I know those three officers um, well, well enough to know that was a great, great decision on uh, everyone's part. And it really is evidence that we have a good leadership structure in Franklin Township. It's also generational that we promoted a man of color above the rank of sergeant for the first time. Could have happened sooner, but better late than never. Um, Mr. Hebben is evidence of professionalism and hard work for many years. But as you remember, uh, I'll even call out Councilman Wright. I spoke to you and Chanel Robinson and Kimberly Francois six years ago. I knew we had a vision that was doable to have a black female police director and black men and women moving up the ranks without limit. And tonight, you guys made a generational change. Now, boys and girls of all ages can look at our leadership ranks and know there is no limit. That is probably one of the most important things to young people is to know that there is opportunity, there is equity and equality, and that they are not limited by the color of their skin, especially as a department so important as law enforcement that there's no limits. You didn't just do a good favor or a good deed for these three men and their family. You did a good deed for the boys and girls that are now paying attention to our town. This is generational. There's no reason to go back. You'll never regret this. And this is something that you could put a badge on your chest that you accomplished. I applaud all of you council members and you, Mr. Vaughn Locker, for seeing this through. This, you'll never regret doing the right thing, and you'll never regret allowing a beautiful decision tonight of those three candidates running that police department along with the police director. Um, that being said, the next thing I just want to um, point out, last year, representing Franklin Township in the state legislature, I got Franklin Township a dedicated grant fund of one point. $2 million for a necessary project that was identified by Bob Warnlocker, the township manager. That was pretty difficult. I was glad to have been given the opportunity to do that. This year, I was kind of surprised at my success for doing that again, not as much money, but I asked Mr. Warnlocker through my staff to identify another project that we could potentially fund that was critical to the taxpayers of Franklin Township. Mr. Vaughn Locker identified a project, he sent all the paperwork to my office, and I fought like heck for that money. Now, as you probably know, that the, um, the state doesn't have a lot of money right now. We are in probably the biggest deficit in the history of this state but I was able to get another $500,000 for Franklin Township for a project, the details of which I'll let um, Mr. Vornlocker discuss. So that being said, um, thank you for working with me. Uh, getting this money really is just simply evidence, uh, is simply evidence that when council and administration work cooperatively with your legislators, there's really nothing we can't get done. I do expect uh, to represent Franklin again in the next budget cycle for one or more other projects for the benefit of Franklin ta taxpayers. That being said, uh, I just personally am gratified that next time I see the mayor, he's not asking me what was the last thing, <laughs> what, what other money can you get me for, for the taxpayers of Franklin Township? He has a way of being, but you have a way of being persistent, Mayor. So, um, so please, everybody help me so the mayor doesn't yell at me anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'll be asking you tomorrow. What have you done for me tomorrow? Okay, <laughs> I'll be glad to run into you, bud. All right. So, thank you, everybody, and have a good night.
tonight assembly. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, Mr. Manager, you're up. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I, I will just follow up the assemblyman's uh, information. So uh, the project that the assemblyman spoke of is that uh, several years ago, uh, I had an opportunity to speak with people from New Jersey American Water um, about our water system. And one of the thoughts that I had, given the fact that our southern part of our water system uh, frequently lacks from water pressure, was, was there a possibility that we could have an interconnect with New Jersey American Water in the southern end of town into their Kingston line? And we worked through that uh, with New Jersey American Water and our consulting engineers and that project has gone through concept and, uh, and design and is nearing uh, the, the point where we would be shovel ready uh, to begin the process of making an interconnect with New Jersey American Water uh, on Route 27 in Kingston, possibly as early as next year. And that project is a multi-million dollar project and that's the, the money that I, uh, I asked uh, Assemblyman Danielson if he could possibly get some funding out of the state for that project and, and that's what it will go towards. So. A, a very good project that will create uh, a much better uh, water delivery system in the southern end of our town. So that's that's the project he spoke of. And now, moving on. Um, the first thing that I would like to talk, and I'm gonna share some things on my screen here, if you don't mind. Um, uh, yesterday began something that Councilwoman Francois asked me about about two months ago. Um, one of the biggest uh, draws to our Franklin Day Festival every year, which unfortunately due to COVID we were unable to hold, was the amnesty program run by our construction department. Um, as you can see, what this says is, have you done work in your home and you didn't know you were uh, uh, quite in, uh, needed construction permits? Uh, or maybe a prior owner did some work and you don't know if they got permits. If the answer is yes, uh, beginning yesterday and through the end of the week, if you are in that situation, what I would suggest is you visit our website and go to the construction page. There's a link for the amnesty program and you can fill out the forms online that would uh, allow you to get permits without penalty. So um, you can thank Councilwoman, Councilwoman Francois for reminding me that that was a a uh, well-received program, and uh, we're able to do it again this year virtually. And we chose the week of the 12th because I believe it was back in 1975, in the the month of uh, uh, the week of October 12th, that the state of New Jersey adopted the Uniform Construction Code. So there you have a little history along with my report here today. Uh, the next thing I'd like to talk about is, um, and it was kind of alluded to earlier. Um, uh, as far as uh, the uh, Community Relations Bureau and pumpkins and, and Halloween. Um, I'll bring that up and let's see if I can share that screen. Okay, all right. So our recreation department, and I will bring up that page too, is sponsoring this year in uh, due, to, due to our need to, to continue to, to, uh, to keep from having large gatherings, um, we unfortunately are not going to have a, uh, a trunk or treat this year. But in lieu of that, what the, the, uh, the public safety director was alluding to was that there is going to be a drive-through event at the municipal complex um, and what we're looking to do is get pumpkins that are carved or decorated by kids throughout the town. And we're going to make those pumpkins available uh, on the 16th at the Community Relations Bureau on ha at 935 Hamilton Street. And on the 17th at the Community Senior Center at the Motley at the DeMott Lane Municipal Complex. And then the pumpkins can be decorated and and at uh, with the police officers arts and crafts with a cop on october 22nd and 23rd at uh the community relations bureau on hamilton street so the the event itself to be held on the 29th and i'm going to bring that up for you now well if you bear with me a little as i'm being technology challenged here. 
Councilwoman, I understand what you mean with the computers these days. Um, and I gotta find it. All right. Okay. Go here and here. Okay. So the idea of the event is that on the 29th and 30th, you will have an opportunity to drive through the municipal complex, which will be decorated with all of the pumpkins that are decorated and carved lying throughout the municipal complex. And at the end of the, uh, the drive through, each child will receive a goodie bag um, that will be put together with items that have been donated by businesses in the township and put together by our recreation staff. Um, the the uh, organizations, the pumpkins are being donated by Snyder's Farm on South Middle Bush Road. The giveaways are being donated by L'Oreal on Clyde Road, Pim Brands, which uh, uh, makes candy over on uh, <clears throat> Cottontail Lane. BAM Desserts on Cedar Grove Lane and Lightbridge Academy, which is a new daycare center at the corner of Randolph Road and Schoolhouse Road. So we've gotten a lot of, uh, of cooperation from uh, township businesses and the recreation staff is working very hard to put this together. Um, and so uh, we're looking forward to having everyone be able to come see all of the pumpkins that are decorated by the kids, and then also the kids get to have a little reward at the end of their drive through And so that's the plan for our Halloween event. Um, this way, everyone has an opportunity to participate, either the kids through decorating, the parents through getting to enjoy the drive through the municipal complex, and then obviously it's Halloween, so there's got to be a little bit of candy at the end, and so that will be on the uh, 29th and 30th of October, Thursday and Friday, Halloween being on Saturday. A um, couple things uh, to go along with uh, the mayor. Mayor, I, not, not that I'm, I'm what, you, what you said about revenue is absolutely true. I just don't want it to be thought of that we somehow collected more tax money because we raised tax money. Just wanted to remind everyone we didn't raise taxes this year. The reason why our tax revenue is up is our collection rate is up, which means we have just been paid more by percentage of, pro of payers than we did uh, in 2019. So that's why the revenue is up. Um, and then to speak to Councilman Wright spoke about um, the crime prevention through environmental design uh, project with Williams Park. Um, I would just like to show people how they can go about leaving comments and they can look at the, at the uh, presentations up to this point. So if you go to our website and on the right hand side, the latest news, if you click on, we need you, there's still time to give uh, input it will bring you to the news article, which is in relation to the uh, crime prevention through environmental design program. If you click on this link right here, it will bring you to the Sustainable Jersey page that is our project. And there are links to all of the events which have taken place so far regarding this project. And this is where you can submit your comments until 5 p.m. tomorrow. So if you're interested in what we're looking at with Naaman Williams Park, I suggest you go to our website, go to that link, look at the presentations. There's video presentations of our meetings as well as the uh, PowerPoint demonstrations that were used by the presenters uh, for the study. And give us your comments. Then see if there's something that, that maybe we can do to make the park better, which is what this whole project was about. So that's what I have, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you. So a couple of clarifications. If someone gets uh, amnesty for their uh, project, they still have to pay the permit. 
That's correct. You have to pay the permit fees, but there'll be no penalties for not for doing the work without the permits. And on the Halloween event, um, the definition of kids does include 65 year old mayors. Absolutely. We, we encourage everyone to come through. Um, we'll, we'll just perhaps maybe have a special goodie bag for you, Mayor. <laughs> okay, very good. Thank you. Um, we're now on to council discussion items, which we have none. Uh, approval of the minutes. I present the following minutes to the Township Council for approval of the Township Council work session regular meeting on September 22nd. Um, 2028 7 p.m. We have a motion. So moved. And a second. Second. Who then seconded any discussion, any corrections, anyone want to change anything? Seeing any present, Madam Clerk. Councilman Ann Barson? Yes. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Off again. That's why you're on mute. <laughs> now you took off your screen. Councilman Galtieri? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Deputy Mayor Onijaka? Yes. Councilwoman Pruitt? Yes. Councilman Vasanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Councilwoman Francois. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Don't worry, Councilwoman. I'm probably about to mess up the meeting any moment now. We are on to approval of the warrants in the amount of $19,838,891.01 on October 13th, 2020. I'll present to Council for payment. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Anyone want to pull an item? Hearing none, Madam Clerk. Councilman and Barson? Yes. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Councilman Galtieri? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Deputy Mayor Onijaka? Yes. Councilwoman Pruitt? Yes. Councilman Vasanella? Yes. Councilman Wright. Yes. So we have no ordinances on second reading. Uh, we do have an ordinance on first reading. This is an introduction uh, to the town, letting everybody know that eventually we will be having the second reading if it passes the first reading uh, to put something into law. This is ordinance 4333 20, an ordinance amendment to go to the Township of Franklin County of Somerset State in New Jersey. More particularly, Chapter 112 Development uh, to consolidate the townships uh, CB Corporate Business M1 Light Manufacturing and M2 Light Manufacturing Zone Districts into a new zoning district called the BI Business and Industry Zone and to make associated amendments to the land development ordinance. The foregoing ordinance is presented to Township Council for adoption on first reading and posting and publication in accordance. With law on public hearing and final adoption at a virtual meeting of the Township Council to be held via WebEx on Tuesday, December 8, 2020, at 7 p.m. We have a motion. So moved. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Um, uh, Councilman Wright is hot to have Councilman Chase explain this. So why don't you have at it, Councilman? Okay, I'm familiar with this because I represent the council on the planning board and this has gone back and forth between the planning board and the uh, land use committee of council, but basically it's the creation of our director of planning, uh, Mark Healy, and it follows up on studies that we've had done, both the county studies and a specific uh, study by uh, four ward planning. Uh, and it's recognizing the fact that uh, the large office buildings are a, a lesson, 
they're not building any more of them and in fact it's difficult to fill the ones that exist uh, so our uh, corporate business zone as has been uh, is not likely to attract more of them so what we're proposing to do is to merge the M1 zone, the M2 zone, and the corporate business zone, and basically allow in the merged zone all of the uses that have been permitted in all three of those zones. M1 and M2 have been basically very similar, except that M1 required a five-acre minimum size parcel, M2 only a two-acre minimum size parcel, and the merge zone will require only a two-acre uh, parcel. And this is for uh, territory basically north of uh, New Brunswick Road and Schoolhouse Lane and the southern side of Schoolhouse Lane uh, up to uh, Randolph Road, plus the M2 zone that centers on Veronica and Clyde uh, and Commerce Roads. Uh, the only areas that are actually having their zone changed in a significant way are two very small parcels on uh, Western Canal Road that are actually part of the Western Canal Road frontage of the senior citizen zone uh, that is, well, it's, uh, it's not senior citizen, the planned, adult, planned community zone, PAC in this map, you see two very small properties that are now listed as as M1 that have been part of the PAC zone. They're much too small to be developed under that. They probably would be fairly difficult to develop for anything significant. Uh, at least one of them is a residence, I think. Uh, the other one is either a residence or a garage. Uh, but we're changing those to M1, and there's also one property there that is next to the agriculture zone, which is basically Zarafath to the west of it, that will be changed to the agriculture zone. But otherwise, basically what this does is have one zone for all of the uses currently approved in the M1, M2, and corporate business zones. Uh, we will still permit hotels we will no longer allow them to go up uh, 12 stories, although we uh, grandfather in the existing hotels that are 12 stories. We'll have a basic height limit of 50 feet, which can be up to 65 feet, but if a structure is to be over 65 feet, it will require a, a bigger uh, buffer. And where this zone fronts on residential zones, a bigger buffer is also required. So I think that really covers the main aspects of this zone. Thank you, Councilman Chase. I'll just leave another few seconds for the map to stay up. Um, anyone else have any comments? Are we still looking at the map? And these zones have been largely developed, although well, certainly there are still some developable properties along Davidson, uh, and perhaps on Belmont. We have one just before the planning board recently on Belmont. And the piece that is between Veronica and Bennett's Lane that some years ago was proposed for uh, 800 apartments. It's always been zoned M2, and it is now about to be developed 
at the M2 uh, standard. So that's in the end. The M2 at the right of the screen there, uh, the bigger part of which is, is really the, the Cleary property. Um, now the, that's, that's on Hamilton Street, the part off the biggest part of the Cleary property, of course, has just been developed for a million square feet warehouse. Uh, there is um, a railroad line lies between it and the houses along Churchill Avenue. Mr. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I, just, I just wanted to uh, make a comment, a general comment, and say that the um, consolidation, this ordinance that consolidates the CB corporate business and the two M1 and M2 light manufacturing zoning districts into a new zone of uh, business and industry. This was vetted with our strategic zoning and, um, recommendation that came from 4 4 planning. It's also part of the 2016 master plan re examination report. And it was vetted by our economic development committee and our land use committee. So we're doing this to encourage economic development, which is what uh, Councilman Jay said. That's the whole intent why we're doing this with them. Anyone else? So my comments are, if you just drive down Davidson Avenue, we're going to see uh, Space available sign after space available sign after space available sign. Um, those are very large buildings that have uh, a significant rateable, so they're, they're uh, assessed at a, a relatively high value, which helps offset property taxes for residents. But those values are going down because they've been vacant for so long. This move really works to help fight taxes and also create jobs in the area. Um, those, those big office buildings are dinosaurs. And I think COVID has put a nail in their coffin if they were still breathing at all because um, more and more companies are now realizing they can work very efficiently and, and not have to pay for a big building by using the internet. So, um, I think this is a, a absolutely at the right time, um, and uh, I'm certainly going to vote yes. Anyone else have anything else? Okay, if we could return back to our regular screen, thank you. Um, if, if no one else has anything to say, Madam Clerk. Councilman M. Larson. What? what? Councilman Chase. Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Councilman Galtieri? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Deputy Mayor Onijaka? Yes. Councilwoman Pruitt? Yes. Councilman Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Councilman Wright. You're muted. Councilman Wright, you're muted. You need to give us a thumbs up or a mute. <laughs> yes. yes. Thank you. Okay. okay. Uh, one little comment I'll make is um, if you'll notice, it's not second reading is until December 8th. That's because it has to go back to the planning board now and then come back to us. Um, we want to make sure it's properly vetted. And for the December 8th meeting, anyone within 200 feet, is that right, is going to be noticed. So um, that'll be an opportunity to speak. So we're on to the consent agenda. Items A through S are listed uh, as listed on the consent agenda portion of this meeting are presented to the Council for adoption. So we have a motion on the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Anyone want to pull an item or point out an item? There's none. Um, Madam Clerk. 
Councilman M. Barson? Yes. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Councilman Galtieri? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Deputy Mayor Oni Jaka? Yes. Councilwoman Pruitt? Yes. Councilman Vastanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Then we have the item number 15, resolutions to be voted on separately. Resolution 20-237, uh, resolution of the Township of Franklin requesting that the Franklin Township Sewer Authority authorize appropriate and transfer $500,000, which uh, does not exceed 5% is the annual operating budget surplus of the Township of Franklin for use in the Township's budget in accordance with NJSA 40A 5A-12.1 uh, within the local authority's fiscal control law. We have a motion. Motion. Second. Who made the motion? I did. Uh, I don't think you want to make the motion. Oh, yes, yes, that's true. We have a motion. I make a motion. I'll second. Moved and seconded. Um, Madam Clerk. Councilman Ann Barson? Uh, I think I have to uh, read to a uh, thing. Yes. Yeah, okay, I have to think. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Councilman Galtieri? Abstain. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Deputy Mayor Oni Jaka? Yes. Councilwoman Pruitt? Yes. Councilman Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Okay, thank you. Do either of you wish the opportunity to explain why you abstain? Uh, so, uh, both Councilman and Barrison and I serve as uh, commissioners. Uh, so it would be a conflict of interest in our, uh, for us to vote on this. Uh, and we also abstain then at the, uh, when the authority author, or when the, it's presented to the authority commissioners to, um, to authorize the payment to the municipality. So in both votes, we abstain as, uh, in our dual capacity. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're up to all business uh, 2020 uh, committees and commissions. Uh, do we have a nomination for any board? I have a nomination. Yes. I nominate Christine Baffa to the Advisory Board of Health. So I'm actually looking at the list, and I know she submitted. Do we don't. Have, we have an opening. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, never mind then. <laughs> um, any other nominations? Um, I'll just read quickly through the open boards. I heard something. Uh, advisory Rec Council, Cultural Arts, Hamilton Street, uh, Advisory Board, uh, Historic <laughs> Preservation, um, Local Energy Team, Open Space Advisory Committee, Planning Board, um, alternate number two, Development. Redevelopment Agency and Trails Committee. Someone said something about Shade Tree? Shade Tree. Shade Tree has openings too. Oh, okay. I appoint that. That's why I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, next item is an executive session. We have none. And the last item is adjournment. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Seconded. Okay, seconded. All in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion is carried. We are adjourned. Please be well, Franklin. Please be careful. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night.